the audio in now and we're starting it up we got the controller oh, okay. up so we're going map into map not, map one was clearly clearly sided to Lankos. So how do you think map two will differ uh i i don't remember the map picks i'm more curious how the bands are gonna go and that'll kind of indicate how much each team plays this map i think that's kind of the more important thing We'll see what. Um. Uh. See, it's hard to tell because I don't know how impactful it was for the last map because I didn't get to see last map. Uh, me personally, I think y'all should look at all chat. Right? Why? Oh. You want? Yeah. What is he saying? I missed it. Do we hold on? Check chat. Wrong sides. Oh, wrong, wrong sides. sides. Oh, so, okay. How is it my fault? <laughs> just say herd. No, just say herd. <laughs> Let him finish bands. Let him finish bands. Let him finish bands. So we know what to put. Did. Oh, good. <laughs> That's my bad. Classic T3 mistakes. That's all you gotta be better, dude. I know, dude. Okay, you're good. <clears throat> All right. Ba -dum -bum -bum -bum. I'm loving it. All right, anyway, let's do this. Not sponsored by Mickey D's, by the way. I mean, it can be. No. I think that it requires Stan to make more money. Uh, create a spectator. You said player? All right, got you. Going. Uh, so who, so what, blue starts or orange then? What was it last time? Thatcher. Hey, Thatcher Finca. Mira Valk. Do the team names real quick. Uh, let me send them invites first so they could start their process of getting in here. Uh, team names. I'm just going to do that. And. Or no, it's top frag, isn't it? CC match replay on add around history. Uh, Okay, gotcha. So blue team starts his attack. Okay, so I just had a flip from last time, that's all. And then, no, no, no. Overtime, oh, overtime. Overtime map. Overtime, map. overtime, uh, map. overtime is orange team starting attack. And map is sky. sky. So now we're just waiting on Nexus team. And the rest of Lycus, and then we're good to go. No problems on that end, and we're set. Double check who starts the Tanko team. Invite tabled. Oh my gosh. Uh, scroll down. Scroll down. Got it, and we are set so to there, roll, dude. So wait, so start. So, so go to match options. Yeah, I already checked it. Orange starts attack, which is 
No, because they start defense. He said. No, oh, he wait, said Lycus starts deep starts defense. Okay, 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. Are we muted? No, we are not no. muted on audio. Do you need me to mute on audio? No. Okay. You're fired. All right, I got you. No problem. <laughs> With that said, we're stealing the stream code. <laughs> Uh, anytime Jinja and Lucius want to swap, we'll get rolling. Emergency e subs. Okay, so once Jinja stops trolling, we'll be good to go. You should have asked him what he what he said. Yes. Are we good? Ask, ask him for the ready. We are all set. All right. We're going to jump into it now. Oh, shit. Wait. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> just, just jokes. Just jokes. Got to have some fun somewhere, yeah? So, anyway... Now we can actually jump into round one of Sky. Uh, for those wondering what this is, this is for drawing. So we can make analysis throughout. Uh, so just FYI. Oh, wait, whoops. Not what I wanted. Get this somewhere where it's not in the way. I'm gonna have to be chasing the bread in like five minutes. Just be ready. Yeah, that's fine. No worries. Assuming that's the code word. Well, this cast has already gone to shit. Why not? Why not just on you? Whoa, whoa. Uh, third caster. Uh, we get an official ruling on this. Stand, stand. I, th I, th I think this is perfectly fine. No. Oh God. Oh. Wait, is it hostage? No. Okay. <laughs> I was like, what? TPL production, TPL production. Yeah, Alright, let's check We've out. How many up. production hours tonight? How many? Uh, that'd be, that'd be 35. <laughs> exactly. Dude, I'm, I'm gonna get back home before this. Alright. This... So, uh, uh, backseat casters aside, assault, figure out your controls. Yo, I, they change it from VODs to, to like actual spectating is different. Not gonna lie. Okay, that's great and all, but I need you to stop complaining and uh, fix your controls. I'm. Oh gosh. Okay. Okay. Are you? Oh, I got it. I got it. I'm sorting it. Heard. Oh yeah, we gotta watch this guy. He's going for it. Oh. Oh, we know he's on it. Seppuku wants it. No, he's not. No. Um, no. All right. Let's see what the attack is like. This is like watching a newborn child. Everyone knows the most important perspective is the hard breach. <laughs> we all know it. it on a real note, interesting take. They brought. If Mav is up, right? Yeah, Mav is up, and they bolted for Thermite and Ace. Uh, yeah, we also have. Uh, this is a, this they, guy's their main primary, yeah? So, well, here's the interesting thing. Diamond charm, by the way. Yes. Okay, the wall's not reinforced. Um, and, and they've surrendered half the map, and he's coming. Oh, Alibi wants it. <laughs> alibi wants it. Okay, he, I have Vigil on the... He wants it. He wants it. Do it. Swing, Russ. Swing! He, oh, if only he didn't get spotted. What a shame. I'm 
I'm just wondering who's gonna get picked first. Well, Ace has cut off, oh, of course, Caster's Curse, man. What is he looking at? He gets traded at least. What is that? That's just loss of situational awareness. What is that? Flores walks in because they're losing. I think an interesting thing to say that Lycus has a really good understanding of holding the cross and they're really okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what was that about holding the crosses? I was really confused. So I don't know what Zephyr was, do. so like what Zephyr Zephyr was doing in that situation, but Lycus has a really good understanding of their cutoff points and what they want to establish as cutoff points. They're really good like at punishing them. However, um, I, this guy's about to get away with them. Okay. <laughs> he got away with a little too much there. Um, which is a little interesting. Uh, Nick's with the shit talk. It is to his own it is teammates. That we are in T3. Or actually, it, it yep. is official that we're. No, 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 so, no, so here, here's the thing, right? The reason why I say this round's over is we have two hard breaches up. Now, <laughs> going against the alibi and the smoke. So. Lucas two in pocket. Oh, he's blind. Oh, but he oh. gets the pick. Can't refrag. Oh, but he gets the thermite. Oh. The 1v1! Ah, uh, Ace loses this, I'm sorry. Yeah. Russ is just feeling himself today, man. I, th I think that's what we learned. Russ is just feeling himself. Lycus has to be very careful in late game situations, especially if Top Frag is down. Considering how fast Top Frag can regroup and gain control of map, especially even if they still lose so much, they will regain it in a heartbeat. The, oh, the, absolutely. But also, uh, they, like, when it comes to their clearing, they're not using utility to actually clear people out. And they kind of, like, just sat on the door, was like, oh, this guy's over here? All right, go peek him. Like, that's what Sledge did, was, like, they got the alibi pick, and then they were like, all right, let's just start walking in now. And then they get fried by some guy hidden, sitting behind drum, because no one, like, I don't know if he lost no track of who plays it, or they're just losing track of the next location. I will agree, though, uh... Tom Frag has a good potential. I wouldn't say as much as it's a regroup or a team effort. It is, um, but Tom Frag has a really good ability to retake the map control and, and uh, lower the man count or even the man count issue. Yeah. In defense, you can tell that they play very fast paced. They are sticking the alibi consistently and they're playing around getting map control and man count to their favor at all times. <clears throat> I, Something I, interesting to see though is despite them bringing alibi and vigil last time, their roam was not very extensive. However, on this side, the roam seems to be quite extensive, even if it's only for time. Well, the roam, it wasn't like they relied They relied on their one flank play, and their flank paint got them their picks, right? Because it was 2v5, if I remember correctly. No, because they lost one, so I think it was like 4v2. And then they just lose two bodies to one guy flanking, because they don't keep track of bodies. Um, let's see. This is kind of split up. We do have one guy below too. They're sticking an underneath entry from Sledge. So from what I've seen so far, Zoe and Sledge are their primaries, right? Or Make. I, I don't know. It seems like they're that's their that's their guy. He's the one who's actually gaining control of the building. Because we're a, a minute into the round, one guy's in the building. Actually, two. Zoe is technically in the building. But Sledge is the only one taking control. Uh, jump out is definitely the worry for this guy. But he's got Claymore, so he's fine. But, you know, if they have impacts, you're kind of screwed. They're still trying to get this wall. They got wall now for Geisha, so they can get Geisha control. He just peeks, man. He just peeks. And that's their that's their entry. That's their entry. Gone. No like refrag. He died. Where? He was peeking the floors. He just died from underneath. Oh. Dies. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Does Jaeger get caught out here? No. Oh. Yes. Jaeger 100% have to get caught out. He's using another. This is the third Flores drone this guy has tried to use just on this. Oh. Why is he jumping on drone? His teammate's pushing up. You. Mm. Yep. 
just swung on. Can't do anything about it. And now they're getting control of Geisha after it's already too late. Sloppy, sloppy. I think the bigger issue there, and it was an issue that was prevalent on the round before, was despite Lanka's, Lanka's being able to hold the cutoffs, which is good, but the issue is the only reason why the cutoffs worked is because the roam wasn't so deep. So that when this round and last round, that when they barely even got pushed to the cutoffs or weren't able to get pushed to, Lanka struggled to find the injuries and they got very sloppy very quickly compared to, you know, as you see top frag, they understand when they're being cut off and they understand what the other team is doing very quickly. They're able to shut it down. The issue is, is Lycus isn't aware of what's going on around them, and they're too worried. They're too reliant on the cutoff to get the picks. Um, it, it just felt like their attacking had no definitive goal as a team. Like, they, there was no... They, they had, like, two guys go underneath, but they weren't really accomplishing anything underneath. And in fact, they lost a body to it, which is makes it like even worse because I could see going underneath and trying to get like nade picks to clear out because ideally what's going on I'll uh or not can I not use my cursor right now there we go that's what I wanted um so ideally what's going on is they went underneath so they could clear out this spot and clear out geisha and then they could push in this way and push upstairs and have this and this was going to be like their entry play and then they're either going to plant over here or plant on the window but their underneath pressure never got really enough control to clear out the guys who were playing above here specifically the shield that they used three flores drones on so you use three flores drones on a spot that you still didn't clear at the end of the day and it's kind of it just feels really sloppy that's all But this is their third site, so maybe we'll see some different changes, or we'll see some better attacks from the third site. And OPK from Nyx on the Repel guy. Yikes. Yeah, this tells me Lycus does not have... I don't know if they're... Oh my gosh. It wouldn't be T3 without just peeking. Ash gets pick. So now it's 4v3. This is still salvageable. The problem is they're still stuck outside. Like all three are still stuck outside. We're at a minute 30 now. There's like no like definitive team play to like get in the building. They're also all kind of individualistic. I mean the two on the balcony, but it, it seems like they both want to do different entry points. If they take control of black, they can get a lot more. Yeah, see this is this is good. Because now they can actually get top floor control, maybe get the Jaeger pick. Um one of them just needs a drone and try and get the Jaeger. He knows too. They know, they might just wallbang him. Yeah, that's a that's a really good isolation. Mel coming around, only flankable player going for the play in a 3v3. This is really risky, but I think he's going to end up paying off for him. He's going to get traded. Never mind. Map's still on cams, but it's the guy behind, I think. <gasps> wow! He still gets away. And he's just. Oh, 1v1, though. Ash Vigil. Still has drones, and he's got time. This is why flank watch is very important when you secure top floor, having the drone set for flank watch, but it's also really hard to have drones established when you're in the 3v3 position. Because you're so low on drone economy from your entry. Or lack of entry, I should say. They know. That's huge, actually. Fifteen now doesn't reload the primary. Interesting. So he knows. So he's just gonna have to pre-fire on it. Yeah. Wow. Ginger with the clutch. The one v two clutch from Ginger to close out that round. 
from what looked like a really terrible round, right? So that giveaway pick in the 5v3 really kind of helped open up the entire round. And then it just slowly kind of snowballed. Um, the flank from the Mel was really good um, to help close out for the defense. But then in the 2v1, they weren't working off of each other. They were still kind of in individual spots where they weren't really refraggable to each other. And that's why, like, refrag positioning is very important on defense, especially when low body counts are happening. And it, but you have the positive body count. That's a that's a really good comeback round from uh, Defenders, protect your bombs from, being defused by from Lycus on the attack. See the setup. For what looked like a really sloppy attack, it was it was a good close from Jinja to get some refrags and isolate a one v two. See what we got. So going to the um, office site with an extension all the way out to T, but not not into T. Sorry, extension out to Drum and uh, Mez. I believe that room's called. Double check. The Amaru play coming out. My guess is that what I'm hoping happens here is we see an Amaru play through the hatch and a plant off with smokes with the wall opens up. So if we get an underneath clear followed by opening up the wall, then we'll see the Amaru go up through the hatch when we smoke off everything or when they smoke off everything and go for an execute of some site like that. That would actually be really cool to see. I'd be curious, especially with Barry on Ying, that could that could create some interesting things. And I like it because it's it's just completely different than how they approached it from last round. Because last round you saw like the default clear across. You had the default clear across from the other side, but this is this is something where it's more direct and immediate. But the hatch is already open, so they have to clear out Lucius from his positioning if they want to use the Ying in the manner in which I'm envisioning them wanting to use it. Although he's droning drum right now, I don't know. Yeah, I just threw away his drone there. Kind of had a really bad positioning. Ooh. I mean, that's, that's a nice angle for him to work off of. That's kind of a waste of an impact. There's there's really no need. He had no intel for that. If he throws another one, he's just wasting utility. Yeah. So, get a wall open. Cade wants to swing out, but he's going to... Ooh, that, I'm, that's close to getting punished on that run out. That's a really... So why do you have Amaru then, if you're... I don't, yeah. They're still setting up. Uh, he's just not prepared for it. He's gotta win that fight on the Cade, man. Um, Nyx is heating. Cade got a little too... Yeah, like, you get the positive body count and then you run out. I don't get that. You have a 5v3 and you're running out. You know, um... He definitely saw he had the play. I think that was the bigger thing, right? <laughs> Alright, Nyx wins those. Amaru goes through the hatch finally at the 30 second mark. Yeah. I just think the priorities are wrong. Um, last round was a really good comeback round from Lycus on the attack. Um, after like a really sloppy flank watch. So they started out pretty much 5v3. Lycus did. They were two bodies down. And then they got control of the map to make it a 3v3. They got flanked. It turned into a 2v1 and Jinja clutched. And then this round, they brought the Amaru, last round they brought the Amaru, and they had the idea of going through the hatch underneath to plant on office, but they were really way too slow and lost too many bodies to actually do the execute. Because like what you want to do is you want to open up the main office wall as like your cutoff person, and then you just go underneath Amaru through the hatch and start planting, and Thermite is now your cutoff, and you have some guy watch outside. Like this, the outside wall contention over here does not matter. If you're... 
Let me raise let me mic volume, buddy. Raise my mic volume? Gotcha. And the game volume, please. The game volume and the mic. Okay, going up with the mic just a bit. And then the game volume. We'll turn this up just a bit. And we'll see how that goes. I don't know. Yes, friend. All right, we'll see how that works. Uh, so like I was saying with it from previous round, what you really should be looking for is opening up this wall and that's now your cutoff. You can Amaro through, plant right here because they reinforce this wall. You don't need to worry about anything going on pretty much on this entire half of the map. You can open up the window, play the cutoff for this. This guy has the cutoff for this because you just open up this wall. You open up both and then you can plant right here or you can plant up here. Either one, most likely back behind the desk. But you have to clear out the smoke that plays this area. That's kind of the approach you want to take to it. So sledge underneath. So this this is the underneath attack, but instead they bring a Monty for it, and their goal is to try and clear out the uh, the smoke player. Well, this just is the primary. Monty's gonna be the walk up. They gotta get the Flores drone up there. That might be enough to do it. So that's kind of a this different. This looks a lot like the BDS attack. Oh, that nitro. That's a really bad he, smoke I don't, play. I don't think you. I don't think you realized the nitro. Yeah, but actually, this is this is a lot better actually though, because sledge their main entry is still up, and it's past the minute thirty mark. Actually, I spoke too soon. It's not past the minute thirty, and they just lost their ash. Is this alibi just in La La Land? Why is? Oh my gosh. I, I mean, well, no, you can't do it because it's reinforced. And now she's back on site. But 3v3 winnable. They just gotta actually work the play. <gasps> oh, that was actually. Yeah, and this is closed now. Because Barry's just outside on. He's If he can get the alibi, it actually might be winnable. If he can get the Cade and flick to the alibi, he's actually got a winnable round. Claymore's gonna kill him. 2v2? Oh, never mind. Alibi's better. Alibi's way uh, better. Yikes. That round was really quick. I think they had the right place for the entry picks. However, they, they let the defense just, like, they let them just funnel into the doorway. They didn't have any backside pressure, nothing on Geisha side, or nothing too, too like devastating from below or from another point of entry to, like, make the defense worry they were just so funneled on one doorway so when it came to time for them to walk in and stuff the defense only had to throw one nitro cell and that killed their entire push yeah and that's also in spite of the big round count where they had smoke killed and i'm pretty sure the jaeger true defenders protect your bombs from being defused by attackers Another thing I'm not noticing from Lycan is despite running six, uh, four nades, they're still not punishing the fact that the team for the most part, the other team for the most part, is simply just not running a Jaeger or a Miner. That's actually a really good point. They're bringing nades and not fucking use it. They, they had one last round. They had a nade pick from uh, Ormaka. He, he was oh, yeah, able to... Like, like, but that was like the first time they've them, actually used them. Yeah, they're using them, but not to their full potential. They have a, yeah. like, these needs have a lot more potential, and if played correctly, they can Five get two picks left. just from nades. Well, and, and they're not running like, ADSs. Are you for four? But the issue is, is like every night, not every nade can be perfect. So, right? So you can at least you should be able to at least guarantee two picks off of nades here, and that's just by playing back. How am I doing anything? The other thing is like they're bringing Flores, and they're like not running a like Jaeger or Wamai. So you're Flores in a shield that doesn't have a Jaeger or Wamai when you could just go goni it and guarantee it. And it could be move like you could move your process a lot faster. Especially since first round you identified the fact that they didn't have a Jaeger or Wamai. It just seems like there's no adaptiveness. It's their same takes over and over.
The triple stack bal black balcony. Gotta love it. But I thought there is a change though, because look, now they're running Mav in place of the Ayana to get past the. Cave but this is this is what they ran, and their main entry dies. <laughs> he should have pre-sludged that. He, that's honestly on the Lycan, because if you notice, he didn't sludge it until after it was open. Oh. They downed the Nyx. They got the re. That's interesting. How was he on black stairs? That's tight. It's practically. Oh. Uh, I don't know what he's supposed to do on that. This is Barry's clueless. Oh. Wow. You know, as a as a team who's played against like this too, like <clears throat> all they say that they were very aggressive when they played us, but like right now, and I'm not trying to say it's in any demeanor in manner, like manner, it's just they don't seem like themselves. They seem very confused, too slow for what they what they're normally used to do from, you know, playing against them. They don't seem like them and they seem way too slow to be playing against. I mean, and to be it's fair, showing, and it's and it's and it's and it's showing because they're getting pushed out and punished for every play they make because they're not playing together and they're playing too slow. I mean, to be fair, if Nix was swinging me at every angle, I I too would be. If Russ and Nix were swinging me on every angle, I'd be petrified. <laughs> it, it. I mean, I I think what we're seeing right now is or comma entries or. They don't get entries for another two minutes. I'm so used to having the fast forward from VOD reviews. Like, oh, I'll just skip through the prep phase, because we all know. <laughs> but <laughs> if I forget, I have to actually go through the prep phase. Um, the extension's out. We'll see. We'll see if they go for direct or if they go for back. This is a different setup though than what they did last time, because their last setup had the shield, but now they're bringing a Mel and actual ADSs, and no Flores, which I actually kind of agree with, because there's no shield. And in fact, if they actually cleared across this time, it, it wouldn't be a bad idea. But they're gonna use. Is, you also have to remember that they just switched sides. Oh, that's right. Duh, I forgot, dude. My bad. <laughs> you can tell just based off the lineups because looking at Lycus, despite them wanting to play more aggressive and then playing more aggressive, they're able to punish the, they're able to perform the aggression by bringing extra utility compared to Top Rag, which was very in favor of bringing the alibi and like enabling it. I'm curious what Russ's play is underneath. Oh, Nyx dies. And there goes their ace. This is this is why I, I don't like having like hyper aggressive players like Nyx on your hard breach rolls. Like yeah, the gun is good and he can make plays off of it, sure, I bet. But like I feel like more I mean, often than not he gets picked off. But the issue is, is not only is he like the, the issue isn't the fact that he's playing your quote hard breach, it's the issue that he's playing your only hard breach. Like if you have two or three and that's your play, and you know that's your whole thing. Nope. He's your only one, and if he dies, that's the issue. Uh, so, tabled's getting. Yep. We'll just not. Wow. And that's why you practice your maving, everyone. So Russ is still pick hunting underneath. Lucius is pick hunting underneath. And Sep is pick hunting underneath. All right, I'm really liking this. One set of nades. Please get this. That's a nice nade, actually. So then they, what, double take up black? That's really the only play they can make. Not only should they double take up black, they should send one on the far side so that they have the back side. Lucius, so no, that that's what Lucius just did. He got his pick for Mez. And then he's got the Mel in a 1v1. If he wins the 1v1, that's a wrap, but he doesn't know. Yeah, he dies. They should be moving a lot faster after they got that first pick. I'm kind of confused why they didn't. Yeah, because now Sep's stuck in the 2v1. He's only got 30. Is he going to go to the other stairs? Oh. Unlucky. You might get the Mel, though. 
Oh, if he got the mail, that would have been winnable. This is a good attempt, though. I think their uh, their wave stairs guy kind of moved a little too fast and took his corners. Got ahead of himself on, on what fast, he needed to clear. Not only too fast, but the other well, not only too fast. The other team, the other side, also pushed too slow. Yeah. If they both went up at the exact same time and just committed to their play regardless, like that that probably would have just been best bet. Because then, like, even if that guy gets the pick on wave, there's only one other guy. So you have a 2v1 on someone, you just need to find him. So just go. Nick Scott wall banged. Does not surprise me. Nyx was not Mav. <laughs> so Nyx... But see, like, because of how they're doing the... This tells me Nyx is their hard breach, which is really confusing. Because Nyx plays a lot of Jaeger, but he doesn't play Jaeger in, like, suicide positions. He just plays Jaeger around the time. Yeah. And he's really, really aggressive. Which, uh, like, if he's really aggressive, then I feel like he should be the guy that's actually, like, taking their entries. That's kind of what you want from your entry guy. You want him to be really aggressive. You want him to understand how to use his drones, but like at the same time. Think what? Well, I mean, I, the thing is, I don't know the team enough to like make an educated guess or a guess in general on who should switch for next. Oh, we don't, but like I, I do. I, in I, general, I do all we know is what we see, and clearly we don't see enough, but. Just from watching him on defense, he's a really hyper aggressive player. I don't understand why you put him on hard breach. Unless he's calling from that position. But even then, I, I I would say call from it. Wow, that's a good pick for Mav. And that's why tables on Mav. I guess he earned back his job after screwing up last round. Let's see what the entries that was, that are up to. That was, but that was pick really did not, you know. Yeah. Well, that was also uh, such and such swinging. Oh, he's got the drum angle. Russ might get caught. Oh, he's off drum now. Never mind. Russ, what a what a play, man. Honestly. That, my friends, is called the lever on effect. The shield? Okay. Interesting shield. Mm -hmm. Yep, just give him a pick back. Just give him a pick back. It works. It works. I want to know I want to know why we're going to play the shield without an ADS. Cuz there's no ADS on that shield. Are you sure there was oh, Wow. Okay. Interesting. Bull strategy cotton. Do they have a twitch? They don't even have a twitch. Yeah, I got nothing cheap. Let's see the take. We got the balcony take, followed by the drum. I actually, I kind of like that they have pressure from like a wide variety of places. It makes sight do a lot of wacky things. And if you can cut it off, it allows you to play really quickly. No, I I, I really like this variety because like that this is a good like L-shaped kill box. Okay, that guy drops underneath. So now. And that's Cade, isn't it? No, Cade's on house. That was your Echo who dropped. So Cade's on house. With or, uh, classic T3 move. We're down on bodies. Obviously, that means flank. Now just hit the site. Go hit the site. Go hit the site. Guys, hit the site. They know the flank. They know the flank. They know the flank. There you go. That's a good play. Good close. That's a really good close. I have to agree. The attack was well put on their side they punished all the stupid aggression that life just threw at them and they were able to get their gold down fun say it's yeah say continue what are you gonna say it's, it, it is nice you know seeing a team you know actually be able to punish their goal and like you go go through with their plan um from top rank as like it's on an attack they didn't look too clued in on what they wanted to do it looked as if they had three different ideas and they looked like a modern day g2 because of it uh, it's not that uh, fun fact if it's if it's you know 3vx um, don't flank just play with your teammates and isolate a pick 
with your teammates. Trying to flank tells me your team lacks discipline on playmaking uh, in that position. Which is not surprising, but considering, you know, the teams are T3. But uh, you should be working with your teammates in 3VXs. Like, regardless of what the other side's got, you have to work with your teammates. And running off to try and solo flank and leaving it two bodies on site with four bodies up on the other side um, creates that end result 10 times out of 10. Nine times out of 10, that should actually be the end result is your team gets wiped. And I know I know what you're going to say is like, oh, we're down in bodies, so obviously that means I need to make a play. Yeah, make a play with your team, though. Oh, I think he, he might have had a magnet that got burned. I wonder if that's what happened. No, because they didn't have one my last round, did they? No, it was just Yeah, I don't know them. That's a weird. Because look, I bet you there'll be no ADS. Oh, he's putting ADS this time. No? No. I don't even see a Wilm either. This would be a good guy to need. Oh, speaking of needs. Pick! That's a, that's a good need. Sorry, I'm like missing the picks that I want to hit, man. The caster's curse really is. I mean, they're turtled up right now. All they really got to do is clear the shield, force on my back, and then good to go. He reinforces walls, so you kind of get free drum control as well. They're giving up free drum control and terrorist control. The only thing is, like, the hole here, but even then, that's not really a playable spot. The big thing too to Getting wall now, too. They, yeah, look, wow, yeah. Okay, they're, about to, they're about to pinch out whoever, um, I think it's smoke. Yeah, they're pinch out that smoke. All I have to do is rotate some players across. Was there a mute jammer? Is that why you can't open it? Yeah, it's a mute jammer. A simple nation below should fix that. Oh, he's already there. That's the yeah, they, desk the opened up. Angle? Now hit the drum. Now go hit the drum. Hit the drum, lock the Wamai down. Oh my gosh. Alright, they get the they get the drum. Yep. He's taking the 1v1 on house, which is not bad. His teammates just need to move faster, and that's why you want to get drum control a lot quicker. He needs to drone it and he's understanding he needs to go. They're giving drum and terrace like that, then you should have control of drum. Is the other thing too the smoke who's playing in the, the, the mini bar position? He was nice. okay, now he finally gets picked. But the issue was is he was sitting there for too long, able to get Adapters away with too much. The I I think the only problem is I I feel like Jaeger gets away with something here. Yep. Never mind, it's three v one. Even if he gets away with the Ayana pick, why aren't they planting? Tables needs to be better at play recognition and body positioning. It was a strong map though from the top right. Yeah, that's a really that's a really strong map showing. We T seven. That's a good one though. That's a good one. Rust dropping eighteen. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, gonna hit all. What? Uh, what's map? You have to double check. All right. Let me uh, let me just double check what map is, and then we'll be good. Nope, not what I want to map in. Chalet. Chalet. Between maps, you show your pre-game screen and stuff. Oh, is that what? And is that audio. ah? Yeah. Are we in intermission right now? Then we're supposed to cutting be. Audio. Gotcha. Audio. Cutting we'll audio right now. Give me some.
make sure it's actually picking up the game. Is it going to pick up the game? Is it not picking up the game? It's not picking up the game. That's all right. I'll just keep it as monitor capture then. Yeah, we'll just do it as that then. All right, so from previous map, um, momentum is going to be carrying forward from top frag, but it, it, I believe it's 1-1 right now. So still even across the board, uh, just more out momentum coming from top frag. Uh, band phase coming in now, like is starting, and then top frag will take over, like is finish. Uh, we'll see how it goes. There's also a, another caster joining us now. Uh, he'll be covering the play-by-play -play stuff. Uh, Wolf and I will be covering the analytical side. I'll let him introduce himself now. Absolutely. Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Sticks9. Um, I'm sure I'm not a known name here, but I'm definitely friends with a couple of the guys here on the roster, especially the Top Frag roster. I do know a couple of the Lycus guys, but just here to kind of cover in, fill in. Um, we can see here the bands are coming in, a little bit of a weird band from Top Frag with the zero pick. Um, you know, Lycus came in with a pretty normal band. Uh, Thatcher's, what's the band percentage on that? Almost 58%. It's ridiculous at this point. The Zero band um, and the Valkyrie band now from Top Frag. Looks like they really want to get rid of the intel here. Um, we're going to see how that works out for them. They're, they're not only taking the intel away from themselves, but they are taking away from Lycus too, so it is going to be more of a frag-heavy match. I guess that is where they got their name from, though, Top Frag. We're going to see if Russ can drop another 18 this game. What do we think? Uh, I, so so far Thatcher's been banned every map, so Thatcher's just not going to be played is what that tells me for the next, you know, however long. Valk also has been a common one uh, to pop up between these two. Uh, I believe that was Organ ban. I could be wrong though. It could have been the Sky ban. Uh, well, my ban well, is my interesting ban because they weren't really efficient with nades last stage or last map, so. They got some picks say, from it from both sides, but not not like enough to make me think like Wamai well, is the play. The well, Wamai ban well. here on Chalet definitely does make sense though, especially for the uh, top Defenders hold, your top site. If you want to hold those blue attackers. stairs, uh, even bar hold definitely makes sense for the Wamai well, ban. Uh, they didn't ban out Jaeger. Yeah. Sly Fox. I'm sorry, Sly Wolf. Got something to say? Something that surprises me is it's it's been top frag that's been talk every time. For a team that likes to play really aggressive on defense, it's kind of boggling to me why they're not bringing the Valkyrie and supporting the and supporting the entry plays and the swing. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely seems like an odd pick for them to ban out. Um, they are definitely an aggressive defense team, um, an aggressive team overall. But it has worked out for them the last map. The only reason it seems to have though is because Russ was just dropping so many kills. Um, they are going to be playing here in Kitchen to start. Uh, definitely not my preferred site, but in comp it is wonderful. So they're going to play the castle here as well. Looks like they are going to hold up top pretty hard. Um, not going to have any feet holes on there to blue stairs. Looks like the Yana and Finca are going to be coming in from library side with a sledge there on Canine Bell. Um, Nyx here is droning out. Looks like he's just looking for intel. Nothing crazy. He is going to swing on the Jaeger there. Did maybe see one there in piano, but he is going to back off and play it safe. Just regroup with his teammates there. The Finca and the Yana are pushed up into library and on balcony. Uh, Jaeger's still there playing the door. He is going to swing aggressively. Nyx will punish him for that. Brings it down to a 5v4 now in the attacker's favor. Castle is peeking piano window. Lion is out there. Almost got his head taken off. Let's see what we can do here right now. I believe that's tabled outside the window on the... I'm sorry, on the Lion. Finca is there in the library hallway. Looks like they are going to be pushing up pretty hard. Drones are not going to be in a great spot for watching flanks, but I definitely have seen worse. Um, definitely a very high uh, upstairs presence. Do you think that's going to maybe go harm them in their defense here, guys? The So the pressure from... 
It's hard because uh, they're played back so far. Like they they're give there's the top floor's already given up in a way. Castle's kind of playing a little too aggro and no teammates. There's no teammates to assist with anything that goes on with him. So if he gets contested, Absolutely. there's nothing to assist. The nitro kill there coming off on Sapuku. That takes their Finko away, takes away a lot of their um, extra health and um, their execution there. Finka is a very big execution operator. Looks like they are trying to get the plant down. They take out the Malusi, brings it down to a 4v3. Nyx with the second pick of the round. Uh, Castle still upstairs. Looked like he wants to try to punish Nick while he's looking down. What's the goal here with the castle? I don't understand. Uh, my, my guess would be it would it would be more related towards maneuverability of the map, but it, it's not providing enough freedom for them to actually move the way they want to move around. And uh, Absolutely not. Another pick and a pick, and it looks like we got a frost mat there on tabled. Yana will take out the castle, meaning that it is technically a 2v1. Ten seconds left. Did I DC? Oh. Five seconds. Okay, awkward. Oh, am I back? You are back. They did win out that round. That is insane. They were down on man advantage from the start, and they managed to pull that around. Which is really surprising to me because they surrendered top floor like really quickly, but and then. Uh, top frag wasn't able to get anything to, like through it. Like they had top floor control and they had the wall control, but they never actually pushed on anything, and they just kind of sat there. And because of it, the defenders were able to move around site the way they wanted to and get the picks that they needed. Yeah, and the sledge not playing upstairs. I mean, it's a sin at that point. How can you have upstairs control and not play it, especially after the castle pick? Attackers need to. You know, the frost the mats they weren't the getting looked out for. Um, Frost mats took out, in my opinion, too many bodies. Um, I know it was just the one injury and the one kill, but that should not be happening. We should be droning. Um, I shouldn't say we, they should be droning. Uh, and they're just not. They're not getting the intel that they need to execute correctly. And it's punishing them. No, not at all. And it, it shows, because like you said, the, the lack of droning it shows it goes forth to a lack of understanding. and. Their goal gets very convoluted and bomb located by attackers. Absolutely. They are going to pick the uh, bar site now. Lycus obviously having the round advantage. Um, they did not keep man advantage for the entirety of last round, but they did make up for it. Um, and they did win out the round. So man advantage obviously isn't a thing that scares them. Let's see what they do here. They are playing a pretty default hold. Uh, you know, they're holding their blue stairs there with the frost as well as the shield. Um, obviously, Wumai is banned, so Jaeger is the obvious pick. Um, we're going to see Lion. Looks like he's going to get out on that balcony early, looking for a pick either into Piano, or he's going to try to get to that library window. Um, they are taking window control early, tabled with an early pick there on the Jaeger. I'm not sure if Jaeger got all of his utility down already or not, but it's obvious that he should have been a fragger, and he is not going to be able to accomplish that. We can see a nice angle there getting held by Lion. Tabled is doing a great job about not playing too aggressively here while his teammates push onto the library balcony. Um, what do you think their goal is here, guys? Uh, smoke is... It seems very... Go. Go ahead. Go. Smoke is priority. Um, clearing smoke first, and then it's going to be clearing across from there. So you clear out the smoke, clear the top blue. Uh, top blue Absolutely. playing aggressive, though. Absolutely, Sly Wolf. I think the bigger focus is to see how defense can bring this back around like they did the first round. Given the first round was a bit off of a couple of hero plays, I'm curious to see if they can pull through again because Jaeger has been first picked twice now. Absolutely, and we can see that they are taking K9 Balk over the library balcony. I think that they decided that that push was just far too dangerous to take. They are taking library, uh, I'm sorry, they are taking K9 Balk control very easily. We do have an attacker that just jumped into Piano Window. Looks like that was Russ on the Yana. He is going to be droning out, sees the shield there. Uh, not sure if he saw the Aruni. Frost is down. I'm not sure if he took fall damage or what. Uh, he may have been hit from main door. Smoke, I'm sorry, Mute is going to go get him right now. This is an opportunity for them to push. Smoke is going to be flanking right now. Tabled gets two kills. Holy smokes. There goes the Aruni and the Mute. Nyx is going to go in and get another pick. We just have the Frost left on blue stairs. 
Lion and Frost having a gunfight there. They are going to know where the Frost is at. Lucius is putting the Diffuser down on the Habana. What will Frost do in this situation? Probably not much of anything. He did not see that player go downstairs. Russ is just going to finish out that final kill and take the round. We can see another round where that man advantage was taken early. And this time, Top Frag decided to take advantage of that. Assault, what are your thoughts? It, it was a good clear of like the actual top floor, getting the smoke to force fall off, um, and, and the good OPK. I think the OPK was the really big decider because it forced everyone to be out of position on defense. And Absolutely, it, and it, Sly That's Wolf. what leads to the spiral. I think the bigger issue is not taking any credit away from top frag, as they are clearly playing pretty well tonight, Defender but I feel like the bigger issue is more of Lycus is playing playing too many blunders and then not able to capitalize around them and fix them. Absolutely. I think Lycus, unfortunately, with their defense at the moment, is not playing for trades. They are getting picked early and not doing anything about it. We can see that they did pick a different bomb site this time. They are playing the master bedroom site. Um, I think Top Frag has a choice here. Obviously, they can take K9 Valk and they can take Library or they can go from underneath. Um, you know, just based off of the operator choice there, underneath isn't really going to be viable. They don't have a buck. Uh, Nyx is sticking on the sledge. Um, we're going to see what they can do, though. If it was me, I would have definitely taken a, a library push, but we can see that they are holding downstairs in the kitchen at least a little bit. With Cade downstairs, um, and it looks like somebody else is walking down there as well. I just can't tell. Um... They are definitely pushing K9 Valk early though with the Yana as well as Lucius on the Thermite running around, it looks like, towards Library Valk. What do you think the push is gonna be here, guys? Assault? Uh, you're gonna start with the clear across. Um, so you're starting from your, your library side, working your way across the map, and then you're gonna go probably see the underneath to get rid of the K charges. And then that's gonna kind of check where the team's at at that point and then make plays based around that. Cade charge cleared early, though, is kind of big. Absolutely. The Cade charge was cleared early. No early picks, just a bit of damage here on the smoke. Um, you know, if anything, Top Frag has been getting quite a bit of damage on the other uh, team. Whether it's picks or not, they just get a lot of damage off. Nyx here as well. Looks like it's about 30 health. Cade here playing an awkward spot. You know, Cade is definitely not the first operator you would think of for a flank, um, but it looks like they are setting up for that. Um, Everybody on top frag here is on top four, minus Finca, who's holding the main stairs. Kate's going to have to flank fairly soon if he wants to have any impact on the round. Sly Wolf? I think something to look out for, more specifically on the defensive side, is since they're so stacked up, I think they can get a, I think if they can get Table to sneak in from the backside, or get anyone to sneak in from the backside for that matter, it could really punish him on the way they're played by attackers. Yeah, definitely could be a big punishment for Lycus right now. We do have a pick there on Russ. Russ obviously being one of their top fraggers. Nyx does get a refrag pick there with Genga getting another pick there on Lucius. That takes out their Thermite and their Yana. Um, Castle's taken a lot of damage though. What are we going to do here? Tabled with a pick onto the smoke. It's a 3v3 now. Health is about the same, about equal. Uh, we got a player in the bathroom. Ginga with the frag here on Sapuku. Let's see. We got a player in bathroom, one in piano. Nyx gets a refrag there on Thrave. What's the goal here from these guys? Do they just finish out with the frag fest or do they try to get the bomb down? No one has case right now, so there is no case play. Picks, yeah, you're going to have to go for picks, especially after that. Now you can That's actually plan. Nyx gets but... another pick. He knows that the last person's in bathroom. What is he going to do? The Cade there is rotating around. I don't think he knows where Nyx is. Just a general idea. Nyx doesn't know much either. He is going to swing around this corner and just pre-fires the wrong spot. Pande there is going to clutch out the round. I wish that I could have seen that played out differently, but that's just a good hold from the Cade. You can't get much better than that. No, it was a good... It, I mean, at the end of the day, it was really good. Uh, Cade being in La La Land for, like, the first start of it... Um, is a bit weird to me that it's the Cade doing it, but it's also because it's so unsuspecting, I could see why it just goes unchecked and why he's able to just go up West Main, be right back onto site in case they don't see the opening for him to make a flank play. Um, but overall, I feel like it was just
good defensive holding, good stalling. Absolutely, Sly Wolf. I think the big thing to note too is to give a lot of credit Defender, to like is because despite it coming down to a 1v1, I feel like like just played that round a lot better. It was a little sloppy towards the end. The 1v1, like is wasn't he wasn't scared to you know fight back and test an advantage, and they played together a lot more than they have in the past two rounds. Absolutely, I'd agree. Uh, they are going to take that kitchen site for a second time now. Obviously, they did not win it the last time. Actually, I'm maybe thinking of Bar. Um, did they win kitchen that first round? I forget. Uh, they win kitchen, but it was off of two cross mats. Yeah, that was okay, a cross mat yeah, win. That is correct. You are right. Um, I think they are going to play pretty similarly here with, um, you know, like is, is still bringing that frost. Um, Ginga is playing that frost almost every round. Um, Frost there is it's a you know it's a good play it keeps the attackers on their toes as far as what they're doing but you know and another thought there Frost definitely picks up a slot for an operator that could be used better by somebody else in my opinion I think it's I think it comes down to like how they're utilizing the utility for it cuz like the utility for it isn't in spots where like it's a jump in play it's used in spots where this opening with the castle. I thought that was going to be a good pick. I thought so too. Castle backing off though. I wonder if they're going to give up top control about as quickly as they did before. Finka Sapuku there is just going to smoke the castle. Still didn't even have a chance. Um, they did take that top control very quickly. It just depends on what they're going to do with it this time. Jaeger is still hiding upstairs. Um, and the Frost just ran up as well. Malusi, Frost, and Jaeger are all upstairs right now. If they were to drone this out, Nyx with the Nay pick onto the Jaeger, that's ironic now, isn't it? Um, you know, if they were to drone this out and notice that site is essentially clear, and actually it is clear right now, Mute's coming around here to bar. Looks like he wants to have a quick flank, but it does oh, look aware. like they are aware of it. They are going to send some shots his way. Looks like he is down. I'm not sure if they know that. The drone is heading in there. They do see that he's down. He's going to finish off the pick here in a second. It brings it all the way down to a 5v2. This leaves Lycus in a really bad position. Um, you know, they have the dedicated droner out there on K9 Valk. Nyx is going to head in. If I had to guess, Nyx is probably calling right now about pushing onto site because it is about that time. Thermite's going to open up that wall if at all possible. And, oh my gosh, Nyx with another pick leaves just the Malusi. They're in a bad spot. Lycus is not looking good this round. Are they even going to get a pick? Yep, Brave with the one onto Russ, and they're going to just trade it out. Lucius gets the final pick of the round, and they're going to win that out better than they did last time. Sly Wolf, what are your thoughts? I think it was a lot better played this time around by, like, <clears throat> or by Top Frag, my bad. Um, the bigger thing to note on is they actually had a game plan. Like, they did the first round too, but the bigger issue was is they had given top floor control, and they were also able to just walk in sight, but they chose both of them, and that kind of spreaded the men count too quickly. This time around, they were able to play a lot slower and play together for their goal, and they were able to punish Lycus for any sort of plays that they made, which in overall, it showed that Top Frag has the potential to just simply win out the series if Lycus continues to play like Attack not themselves as of they are currently but the bigger point. issue is to more worry about if <clears throat> if Tom Frag can continue to play together or they're going to start slopping back up again absolutely assault any more to add on to that I, I'm thinking more so about the